Killer Vault Bikes, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Now, inadvertently, this is kind of a Contact Talks week. I don't know if we're going to continue on this trend, but it's been three days and we've got three Tech Talks, so this is how it goes sometimes. I've been asked by a number of you to test out this QS180 on a bench test. Several questions to do with this Goliath motor, so today that's what we're going to do. We're going to test this out with this special encoder edition fire driver and we've got a 72 volt battery here to run it with. So let's have some fun. Let's test it on the bench and see what happens. So the first thing that I've been noticing, the first thing I've been noticing people commenting online is how hard this motor is to turn. So if we put this on, See, we get like, um, let's just put it like this. It's quite a considerable amount of force. Bear in mind, none of the phases are crossed. I'm sure if we were to cross two of the phases, like so, yeah, that's rendering it near on immovable. And then I'm sure three of them, yeah, it's pretty, <sighs> yeah, it's pretty damn solid. So. Without anything connected, we do have like a, a cogging effect, which I believe is caused by the power of these magnets that are inside. So that's the first thing to notice, note about the motor, that it, there is like that. It's almost like a stepping effect. It wants to fall into a step, into a like it's relatively smooth to a point, and then when it comes to a stop, comes to a stop so that's just how the motor is it's have we got a qs 180 to hand sorry have we got a qs 138 to hand to test spin we don't unfortunately but you're just gonna have to take my word for it it spins a lot harder it's a lot harder to spin than a qs 138 so now is probably a good time to try and set this up this is the controller we're using which is a far driver ND96850B, and the B indicates that it's an encoder edition. Now the wiring loom on this encoder edition far driver is slightly different. It's a little bit like the new far driver that we reviewed in the last far driver tech talks, the ones which had the nice heat sink on the back where they've kind of shrunk everything down. Instead of having loads of different plugs, you've just got two main plugs and then one encoder plug and a Bluetooth port. So, that's, that's a nice little touch there. Um, what we're going to do now, first things first, let's connect. Oh, we've got the foot throttle from the go-kart. If you're asking why the go-kart, because it's right there. It was the first thing that we could grab for a spare throttle there. It's also nice to present with. So first things first, if we get these phases bolted down, at these phase wires are epic, they're immense, so there's not much play or movement in them. I'm going to stick this one like this, just so it's not in the way of these plugs here. I'm going to do like a similar fashion with the green. Let's put it like that. No, but just can like focusing on. That's what I'm saying. That's what they want to be seeing. It's a beast motor, yeah. Right, we're going to plug this in, which is the uh, wiring harness. Get that plugged in. That's so. So first thing into the wiring harness is going to be our encoder. And bear in mind, what we're doing now is the minimum amount of stuff that you need to run a far driver controller. So this is like the bare minimums that's going to get you to where you want to go. We've got some crocodile clips here to do some of the connections we need to do. 
So we're going to put the throttle here. We've got we've got white and red here for the throttle. So we throttle, throttle five volt positive. Let's be specific with these. So we're just going to run this under here, like so. I'll just put that there. Make sure they're separate and they're not going to touch. Oh, woe is I if they was to touch. Right, so the last one is going to go to the positive and that's going to turn on the controller, which is this orange wire here. The ignition. So a little bit of tape just there, just for a little extra added precaution. Don't want nothing short inside. So if we get our battery terminals, put those on very cautiously, bear in mind. We're going to get our mobile device ready and you're going to see this on the screen now, all the stuff we need to do on the Fire Driver app. So here we go. <laughs> Fire Driver app is now open and ready. So if we get this, <laughs> move this over a little bit. We're just going to give it a safety tap, little spark there. So, this crocodile clip now, we're going to just get this on here and we're going to insulate him because he's going to carry the battery voltage. So, just give him a little, little wrap of tape like so. Uh huh, uh huh. Now, the moment of truth, will this boot up? Scan. Oh, screen recorder. Right, connect. It says connected. On this graph, we've got 73 volts in the battery. Motor temperature of zero. MOSFET temperature of 21. What we're going to do now is just give it a small. Okay, we've got nothing, so. Hmm. Let's hit auto learn. And just. No motor spinning, hmm. So, we're gonna exit this learn. Oh, it's in neutral. There you go. We've got there in the end. Right, so we're in neutral. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna go, functions, gear default, default high, obviously, no. <laughs> default low. Save that, save. Controller should beep, controller beeped. Turn it off. Turn it back on. Now, if we reconnect, let's just do scan, click, connect. It says it's connected. Right, it says we're in drive, low speed. Moment of truth. Apparently that's low speed. So you know exactly what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna go default button high speed now. Save that, save that. 
reboot this off, back on, scan. Why are you beeping for, man? MOE current protect. Don't listen to that. That's lies. We're going to do auto learn right now. Let's see what happens with the auto learn. That is possibly the quickest I've ever seen it do auto learn. Did you see when it changed direction, it almost had my arm. So throttle error is normal. What we're gonna do is exit learn now. Reboot the controller one more time. Dun 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 dun. dun. Scan. Connecting again. Right, we're in drive. I don't know if this is, yeah, this is drive high speed because there's no H. It says L for low, M for medium, and then nothing for high speed. See, I like these guys. They, they're a bit like me. They presume you're just gonna run it in high speed as standard, so. Right, let's test this out. Let's see what happens with a high speed spin up now. Whoa, yo, 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 yo. I think we need a bit of assistance here. Can you, can, I think I need a bit of assistance, bro. Wait, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it. Yeah, the talk is crazy. Right, we're getting a bit of assistance here. We're gonna try and manhandle the motor. Right, here we go. You ready, yeah? Hold in, full speed ahead. We've got some serious power inside, ladies and gents. Right, we're gonna do that one more time. Are you ready, yeah? So to conclude, we've discovered that the QS180 has some absolutely incredible torque. This battery is only, as we mentioned, charged to 73 volts. This is a 96, bear in mind, it's only a 72 volt battery. This is a 96 volt controller. So when it's fully charged at 96 volts and pushing out all the amps it needs to, we can only imagine this is gonna be some chain busting torque. This is gonna be all the wheelies, all the amp draw, we better hope we've got a battery to match that. So, I love it. As you can see, nice and easy setup with fire driver, zero throttle lag or throttle delay. The only thing you've got to worry about is making sure this thing's bolted down enough so it doesn't bounce off the desk or do anything like that. Thank you very much for watching. This has been a very exciting episode. We've tested out the 180, wired it all up, got it running. Easy peasy. Next step is to fit it into a project. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. It's been Killer Volt Bikes. We'll see you next time.